Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Marr. I just wanted to do a quick video that talked a little bit more in detail about eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, pretty much this is an armature like we've done in the previous videos. Uh, it's got a little bit of clay, not a ton, but a little bit of clay built up under the saran wrap, which is under the actual slab, so that I can take the eyebrow and alter its shape if I want it, if I want somebody to look like they're evil or they're um, excited or, you know, I can change the eyebrows to sort of imply that and that helps to create the socket that the eye is going to go in. You can build up the cheek to imply that even more. But let's just say we, we've built up the socket. The other thing is because you've got a little bit of clay under the saran wrap, um, so it's not part of the actual mask, you can go in and move this around and you're not just moving the slab, you're moving the clay underneath. So you can decide the bridge of the nose should be a little narrower. Um, maybe he's going to have like a bump there, like a his eyebrow's going to have more shape. We talked a little bit, there's pictures hanging in the room of different emotions and facial expressions. So look at those if you have a particular facial expression. But the clay underneath here allows me to still control it a lot and saying that having said that I'm pushing around the slab on the top but I can play up more um, where the nostril is and where the tip of the nose is and you know bring the nose more to a tip or I can add some more clay to the tip um, if, I, if I want to and combine it you can't get too thick with this um, you know depending on what your character your creature is like you couldn't do a whole snout this way unless you made it hollow but you can add a little bit on there and expand the tip of the nose if you wanted to. If you were doing a witch or something. Um, and expand it above the, the slab. Make sure that you incorporate it into the tip of the nose. And you can separate it. You can even use a tool to do it. You don't want to go down too far. You don't want to cut all the way through your slab. But you can make that nostril stick out. Um, there's also that thin part under the nose. First, and you, you, first of all, you can also put real nostrils in there, and if it is thick in this area, that will help to thin it out. Okay? Make those whatever shape. Don't forget, there's like that little crease that comes down here that goes right under the tip of the nose um, and defines the lips as well. You can get in there. A Q-tip would be a good thing to have right now, and I don't, but a Q-tip would work. We have some in the art room. I'm not in the ceramics room right now, so um, it's not going to happen. Uh, but you can think about how you want to form that, how you want to form the nostrils. You can go in with a tool, maybe um, even a paintbrush, if you have a paintbrush handy, and create nostrils and shape that. Um, it hollows out the clay, which will help it to dry more. You might go all the way through and hit your saran wrap, and that's not the end of the world. Um, but it does help to sort of thin out the clay. Okay, and you can kind of control the shape of it from underneath, too. You want it to be nice and smooth and fine-tune it and make sure the shapes are accurate. You can look around the room and see some nostrils and decide what you want to do. Um, We'll get back to the lips in a second. Or, yeah, we'll do lips first. Um, now, there's a difference between a closed mouth and an open mouth. And there is a little bit of clay on the armature that I can play with here. But you want to decide, let's say, let's say the mouth is closed, okay? If you've got like a center line and it bump a little bit there, um, what you need to remember is that your lips are thicker in the center than they are out here. When they get out here, they're pretty much flat with the skin, okay? And the lips have form, sometimes a lot of form to them. So they're not going to be flat. You're not just drawing a straight line there. You're going to angle these. So you can angle that up, okay? And because I made that sort of groove coming down this way, um, it's going to angle into those little points. You know? And you can play that up to 
do. So those points work with that little crease that's up at the top. And I'm not doing a very good job of this. You want that to be a, a smooth surface. It can be rounded, but it should be unified. And right now it's not. I need to pull that back down, round it. But having a little bit of an angle, it's not a straight up and down line, is going to make it more lip-like. Okay, I would go back maybe with a paintbrush later and fine-tune that. Make sure that the points are falling sort of equally on either side and that that little divot in the center of the upper lip there is equal on both sides. And then you can do the same sort of thing. The, lower, the upper lip tends to be thinner and longer. The lower lip tends to puff more, particularly when you're talking about color, if you're talking about painting. Sometimes out here it's actual skin tone and then it puffs more. So we could put a little bit more there too. You could take like a little, almost like a bead and make the lower lip come out. You're gonna, you know, combine it with the skin, but it's really smaller than the upper lip at any rate. Okay, and again, that's going to angle. It's not straight down in the center. It will roll out. Okay, if you do a teeth, we may come back and do teeth at the end. If anybody wants to do teeth, and then out here, this can come up. You know, it kind of might be part of the cheek. You might have some dimples out here. Um, you take a little, whoops, a little paintbrush and some water and sort of smooth. Sometimes it's easier to get into areas. Um, that you can't get into with your fingers. And you can sometimes use that to take away little bits of clay and soften edges as well. Okay, so that's that. But the thing I really wanted to talk to you about um, was the eyes. So say you have eyes. What you really need to think about is your cheekbones might be built up, your eyebrow, and by brow I don't necessarily mean the, um, the, the hair part of your eyebrow, but the muscle part and you, the bone part of your eyebrow is going to create an eye socket. And within that eye socket, you're going to have your eyeball. So the entire thing is recessed in the skull. I should have wedged this a little bit beforehand. Um, the entire thing is in the skull, but the eyeball itself sticks out, and it doesn't stick out evenly. A lot of times I see people cut the shape and stick it on there. You want it to be almost like a football. Um, this is probably a little too big. Pull some of that off and make it a little smaller, because it can be very, it depends on what you're doing with your eyes. If you want your eyes to be very um, realistic, then it should be very subtle. If you're doing a mask that's very exaggerated and not really human looking, then you can get as crazy with it as you want to get. But you want to think about it as a football because the eyes don't stick out as much in the corners as they do in the center. And I would take this football and cut it in half. Uh, if I had a fat thing knife. All right, yeah, we'll do it with a pen tool. So here's my football. Okay? And I'm going to cut it in half so that I have equal amounts for both eyes. I might still decide to cut more off, but I'm starting out with the corners being the same on both ends, um, which may not be the same as both ends on one side, but each one is going to have a corner that's the same if you do it this way. So you would take the two that are here, and maybe make them be the center there. That's the theory anyway. I kind of didn't necessarily <coughs> put as much time into that as I should, but this is just to give you an idea um, of one way to do it. It's not the only way by any stretch. A lot of masks have holes, uh, but a lot of people don't want to actually use it as a mask in here. We're just using it for decorative purposes or learning how to do certain things with the clay is the first big project. So you're going to slip and score and stick them in place. 
And what I want you to think about is don't think of this as the, the white of the eye, the eyeball at this point. Think of this as an eye you can't open. So we want to just take this skin and stick it into the skin on the top, going up into the eye socket. And I, uh, and you want to have it come down. So you want it narrowest or, or sticking out the most in the center and barely sticking out on the edges. Okay? And don't think of that as an eyeball that you can open yet. I'll show you that in a minute. But think of it as just skin going over with an eyeball underneath. Okay, because we want it to be number one connected and make sure that there's no um, air bubbles in there. And just consistently, smoothly work its way. And you want to make sure that the highest part is in the center where the eye would stick out the most. Now, I'm not going to do this one right now because I don't think we need to. If it gets stuck, it's a backup. Okay. And you have to wash your hands off. You're working with really wet, slippy clay at this point, so you want to wa um, wash your hands regularly. So now what you need to think about is where the point in the center of the eye is. And I like using this tool um, because of the fact that it's got a nice point on it, but it's also got a kind of rounded edge, and sections of it are flat enough that you can kind of go in there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to make a mark that's going to be the um, the opening of the eye. So what I'll get is the thickness of the eyelid. So let's say, and remember eyes can open a di different amount, so you decide this. But I'm pushing down the hardest in the corners and I'm laying off it and kind of tilting towards where I want the eyeball to be. Okay? and or well, I'm sorry, where I want the eyelid to be. And then you're going to push down the most in the corner there. And it's going to appear like that eye is recessed. Okay? I'm dipping it in the tool to clean it off. The bottom of the eye doesn't tend to round down as much as the top does, but you're going to tilt your tool towards that bottom. Don't worry too much about the middle yet. Okay? But if you tilt the tool towards the bottom, you can press down and make it appear that your eye, I'm going to flatten that a little bit. You could carve it off or you can flatten it. But it, it's, your eyeball is going to look like it's receding within the lid. And you can take a little bit of just water on a brush and soften those edges. Now, depending on whether you're doing a human or you're doing an animal or, um, you know, it's a made up character, will depend on whether you want eyelashes. You want to soften away the edges. But that's an easy way to kind of make your eye look like it's sitting under an eyelid. Okay? You can carve that down a little bit and smooth it again if you want to. As far as eyelashes go, there's a lot of things that you want to think about. Number one, um, don't try and do individual eyelashes. You know, people try to roll these tiny little coils. Uh, you don't, they're good, they're going to dry out. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so, what I'm doing is I'm making a, a row of clay that gets very thin at the eyelash end, but has a little extra thickness under here. So, if you look at it, it's kind of like a wedge. I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, thin out here and thick down here. So I have an area that I can attach. And we can still push it around once it's attached, but it gives you something to connect to the eye and it doesn't get so thin that there's, it's, the eyelashes are too skinny at the corners. Now, you don't have thick eyelashes in the center near the nose. Your eyelashes tend to get thicker out here. Okay, so you might want them to be a little longer. You might want them to stick out. Depends on what you're doing and if it's somebody who would be likely wearing mascara or if it's just supposed to be subtle. And you can overdo it and then dig away at it if you want to. 
Um, you might have to redo the eye if that's the route you're going. But as I'm pushing in there, I'm also combining the actual eyelash section with the eyelid section. You can do that on the top too. And then you can take a tool and kind of trim away at it, depending on what you're doing. You can curl it up. Um, if I want to do it really in a rough way, I could take a fork, but you could also take like a comb. And you can break it up too, or carve into it. Eyelashes tend to roll towards the outer edge. These are a little chunky. Um, and you may not want them to go that long or be that stuck out when you get out here. But it really does all depend on what you're trying to get across, you have, like what your character's all about. You know, if it's a model and she's wearing a lot of eyeliner, it has fake eyelashes, then it would look very different than, you know, not. Okay, or a princess might look different than an ogre. Okay. So like I said, you can you can fine tune these eyelashes, but at least you've got some clay there to work with to do it. Okay, and something more subtle like a, a little plastic comb will give you a, a texture that isn't quite as dramatic as this. Okay. Now you can also do something similar with the um, the hairs on the eyebrow too. You could add a little bit and carve into that, or you could just put them, you know start carving the actual hair part into the clay. And again, there are tools that it would be more subtle than this. It depends on what you're going for. Um, that's one thing we need to talk about. The other thing, if you just needed eyes and nose and mouth, you're good. Um, some people were thinking of doing a hat. Um, and you could do anything from a crown to a baseball hat. Okay. Now, this piece of clay I was going to make the, um, the rim or the brim of a baseball hat. So I'm going to take this and I'm just kind of guessing at the moment. You want it nice and even, but let's say it's like that. When I rolled this clay, I rolled it thinner out here and left a little thickness here because I know that, well, I didn't roll it too thin out there either, actually, um, but I can roll it thinner if I wanted to. I'm not going to take the time to right now, but um, the bottom line is you want thickness for the edge, but you want it to be believable. You want thickness for the edge where it's going to connect to the head. All right. And there's a couple ways of doing that. You can build the entire hat, including the part your head sits in, or you can make this look like that, depending on how wet your clay is. So this edge, if you keep it flat, isn't going to work. So I would want to carve this at an angle so that it sits around the head. Okay. Like that. Now I can change the head so that it looks like a hat um, rather than add a lot more of heavy clay up there. Okay, And this is this is thicker than it needs to be, but for first project, I don't want you to work so thin that you run into trouble later. Um, just know that you can thin this clay out as you get a little more comfortable with it. And I'm going to slip and score this. I would want to actually get some water. The bottom side of this clay was getting kind of dried out and cracked, so you would want to fix that before too long. Um, and I've got a little mark there showing where I put it down for its test run. You're going to see, remember, you don't want to score too far out because that's going to be the hat. Okay, and you can bend the clay too. So that can go straight or you can give it a curve. Curves tend to be a little more structurally sound. You can thin this out at the edges. You could even, um, before you put it on, put like stitching marks or um, parts that 
would show the details of the hat. And then you want to get in underneath here. Actually, I made that kind of high. I'm going to move this down on his head a little bit. And then you want to push the clay. You could put a coil in here, too. Um, and what the coil would do, well, our clay is a little thick, so we can push around the clay that's actually part of it. And not lose so much that it's weak right where it's attached because we squeeze too much of it away. And you'd want to clean it up. Maybe he's got some hair in there or something that's going to come down. And then you definitely want to attach. Let's stand up and try and do it this way and see if you can see. Attach this very carefully. Um, all the way around. And now if there's a little piping or something there, you'd want to put a little coil and do that. It really depends on the hat you're trying to make. But you want it to be smooth. And believable. Keeping your hands wet will help with that. Now you could do anything. You could do big crazy hair. Um, you just don't want to get thicker than your thumb. If you do, just make it hollow. If you have a horn that's really round out here, it's okay. Just when you take it off the mass, first of all, make it a slab and roll it and make it hollow. And then after that, you're going to want to um, make sure you go in from the inside of the mask and put a hole going into that hollow area so that it sticks out. Okay, so we get that connected there. And then what I would probably do is take this, my clay is still very wet, roll it differently. Now I could have, uh, um, if I planned this, I could have made the, um, the clay under the saran wrap come all the way out here so that the, this wrapped like this in the first place and that's all clay underneath there. Okay, but I didn't really start out thinking this. I'm going to get rid of some of it, but I don't want to get rid of it all at once, just in case when I roll it down, I need it more. Okay? And you don't want to see that cookie cutter edge, so you're going to smooth it and roll it. Okay? Until you get it the way you want it. And the clay is thick enough that you can play with it. Um, but you're going to take your sponge, this would have been better, and you could put newspaper or something crumpled up newspaper in there to support that until you get it the shape you want it and it's leather hard enough to hold its shape, okay? It might be squared off at the top, depends on the hat you're making too, right? You can use a rib to do this, like we did when we made, actually I don't think you've seen the video yet for the mug, but we used a rib on the mug. Um, now the key is, when you get down here, like say you found your edge here, you're going to make your hat come this way, and that's going to be the side of your mask. It's getting a little ca caught on the uh, saran wrap, but let's pull that away. And you're going to smooth your edge. Make sure that your mask looks professional down here. You're going to smooth it off and make sure it doesn't, that the, s the clay doesn't come up too far. You want to see it all the way around. Um, same thing with the area where the hat is. You're going to make sure it rolls around the way you want it to be there. hanging this off the edge of the table to do it. You can kind of get more controls over it too. Um, but you want to make sure that when you get down here, where the hat is meeting the skin, that you press in so the hat looks like it's above the skin. There might be hair there, there might be ears, who knows. But you want to give that feeling. I didn't add any clay, except for, you know, the brim. But I'm pressing in, not too far, but I'm pressing in enough so it looks like the hat extends over the skin.
Okay. Then when you get up here, um, you might have some sort of stitching or piping that defines where the rim is. Um, there might be s double stitching that comes up this way. And there's a lot of ways you could do that, but let's just say you've got different surfaces and there might be double stitching that connects them. You could take a wider tool, maybe this one, or even wider, press back certain areas so that stitching appears to be standing up on either side. Um, I'm going to tip this. I'm going to go lefty on this one. You could get around the other side of it at the table too. But you could make your seams stick out a little more if you did something like that. Then you want to get all the little nubbies off of it. Uh, maybe with a paintbrush or maybe if it's drier. Um, if there's another seam, there might be one over here. It does the same thing. Okay? So fine tuning is important. Take your time and think about the details. It would be better if you have a hat that you can be looking at as you're doing this, or at least a picture of a hat. And I don't mean on a phone where it's going to turn to black and you've got to get your ceramic hands all over it all the time. So it's easier to print it out um, than to keep messing with your phone while you're covered with ceramics. But the beauty of the clay is that you have three dimensions to work with. You're not drawing with a pin tool and calling it a seam, although some seams, if you were doing thread, you might be able to do that way. Um, but you're going to define every area by the thickness of the clay and where it goes in and out, and then you can smooth it. You could even put a piece of cloth across it and give it a cloth texture once you have it the way you want it to be. And then you could take and put a little button up at the top of it, depending on what kind of hat you're making here. No, it doesn't have to be big, but you, and you should slip and score it. Okay? So, that's how you make an eye, a nose, a mouth, and how you can make a hat without actually adding clay, like you're building a hat and sticking it on. You're implying that this is a hat just by making it different than the face. And then go back and do your fine tuning. Okay? And, or add other details. So, eyes, nose, mouth, and hat. If you have any questions, let me know, um, and have a good day.